Is our species already the walking dead? According to a report authored by scientists from Stanford University, Berkeley, Princeton, Yunnan University, we are likely facing the sixth mass extinction in our planet's history. This beautiful planet where we live has been around about 4.5 billion years, and in those years it has faced five mass extinctions thus far. The last one was about 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs disappeared. All of the previous mass extinctions have been caused by natural phenomena like meteors and volcanic eruptions. But it now looks like we are facing what could be the six mass extinctions and unlike the previous five, this one is entirely man-made, caused by human activities like deforestation and overfishing. Species are disappearing and going extinct forever at a rate of 1,000 to 10,000 times faster than normal. And the experts think that this will affect humans as well. They pointed out that using extremely conservative assumptions, which likely underestimate, underestimate the actual severity of the extinction crisis, these estimates reveal an exceptionally rapid loss of biodiversity over the last few centuries, indicating that the sixth mass extinction is already underway. They repeated, we can confidently conclude that modern extinction rates are exceptionally high, that they are increasing, and that they suggest a mass extinction is underway the sixth of its kind in Earth's 4.5 billion years of history. I can see how human activities like leveling forests and overfishing are causing species to go extinct. But in my selfish survival mode, in my selfish survival mind, I could think, well, this is a terrible thing. It's not going to directly affect humans, is it? If there are no more rhinos, or no more kangaroos, that's a terrible thing. But it's not like that would affect me personally, my way of life, right? But it's not like that. As the scientists behind this study point out, the problem is that our environment is like a brick wall. It will hold if you pull out individual bricks, but eventually it just takes one to make everything fall apart. Biodiversity provides a lot of critical functions that we don't even think about, from cleaning up the water and air, to bees and other animals and birds pollinating plants. But I do hope we can avoid this tragedy, and so do the authors. But they warn, averting a dramatic decay of biodiversity and the subsequent loss of ecosystem services is still possible through intensified conservation efforts. But that window of opportunity is rapidly closing. As Dr. Anthony Barnowski, a scientist from UC Berkeley who worked on this study pointed out, whatever we decide to do in the next 10 to 15 years, will decide the future of biodiversity in Earth. Such a narrow 10 to 15 year window to get this right. Should we wait until year 9 or year 14 to get our act together? Obviously not. This is an urgent matter. Action on a massive scale is needed now. The one bit of good news is that there's actually something very practical and easy that we can all do right now in our personal lives. Specifically, the scientists behind this report ask that you do the following. Number one, reduce your carbon footprint. Number two, don't buy products from endangered species. That's pretty obvious. Number three, the author says, eat less meat. 40% of the earth is under cultivation and if the lands used to feed livestock were used to feed crops for people, there would be 50 to 70% more calories available for humans to eat, which is enough to feed one additional billion people. It would eliminate the need to clear natural ecosystems like rainforests, 
for farmlands. That's right, livestock, meat, dairy, and other animal products. According to the United Nations 2006 report, Livestock Slung Shadow, the livestock sector may well be the leading player in the reduction of biodiversity since it is the major driver of deforestation, as well as one of the leading drivers of land degradation, pollution, climate change, overfishing, sedimentation of coastal areas, and facilitation by alien species. They also say the following, livestock production accounts for 70% of all agricultural land and 30% of all of the land surface on the planet. Is it really worth sacrificing our planet for our palate pleasure? Speaking of sacrificing, don't forget the health aspects. Is it also worth sacrificing our health for our old habits of eating these foods? I'm a physician and I both eat and recommend a plant-based vegan diet. Protein is abundant in plant foods and without all the problematic aspects of animal foods, which include increased risk of cardiovascular disease, certain cancers, among many other health problems. And speaking of sacrificing, we don't deserve to shield ourselves from the suffering of the animals behind our food choices. Even if I'm not directly killing animals, when I pay for animal products at a restaurant or at a store, I'm indirectly paying for someone else to inflict harm and suffering on animals on my behalf. Animals are being killed by the billions in horrible conditions after enduring horrible lives just because we breed them into existence for a life of misery, just so we can eat their flesh and secretions. Let's not sacrifice our planet to eat something that's unhealthy, unnecessary, and needlessly inflicts immense suffering and terror upon billions of sentient animals. If you're not doing so already, I urge you to leave animals and animal products off of your plates forever, for your own health, for the planet's survival, and for the animals. Thank you very much.